O our beloved and dear Father, you are our Lord, our glory, our wealth, our eternity. You are our Father. Not everyone has this privilege of calling you our Father in heaven. Not everyone, unfortunately. However, those who have such privilege know who they are talking to when they say, Our Father in heaven. Oh, our beloved and dear Father, receive our lives and make us multiply throughout this world so that your name may be sanctified in our lives in order for your kingdom to be extended to everyone, all peoples, tongues, nations, tribes, so that then, my Lord, finally, your will may be done in our lives here on earth as it is done in heaven. We ask you, direct our thoughts, lead our hearts, because we don't know how to think the way we should think. Please, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus our Lord, direct our thoughts. Do not allow us, Lord, to deviate, not even from a moment of time. May indeed, my Lord, because indeed we want to do your will, we want to sanctify your name here on earth, your name that has been profaned by the nations, by the unbelievers, by the children of darkness, the children of Belial. Oh, my Father, you want to raise a people, you want to raise a family for you here that will sanctify you and sanctify your name here on earth. So give us this direction, my Father, so that you may be sanctified, you may have your name sanctified here on earth. Because there in heaven, you are already holy, holy, holy. Everything cries out holy before you. Your name says holy. Things start to have life before you to say holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallelujah. But not here on earth, my Father. There are few. And we pray that this few may be multiplied in order for your glory to be manifested and the nations may know that you alone are God. Hallelujah. We ask you and we thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And praise God. You may be seated, please. I don't know if you have already noticed that I don't sing in the pastor's meeting. It's difficult. I don't think I've ever done it. But have you noticed this? That in our meetings, I always work with the wood. Why don't I sing? Perhaps you may question, why doesn't Bishop seek the Holy Spirit here with us. Do you know why? Because the greatest worship that we owe God is to sanctify His name in our lives. It's our character in deed and in truth, a character according to His will, truthful, pure, just, and this is what glorifies God, more than worships and praises, more than praises and worship, hallelujah, hallelujah, because when we think according to the thoughts of God, 
which is his word, we absorb the spirit of the word, the spirit of God. When you think the thoughts of God, you think as God wants you to think. So, when we think the way God does, then we learn as well to sanctify His name here on earth because we will do and proceed, we will act as He would act if He were in our place. Amen? God is the Word. God is the Word. Everything in this world revolves around the Word. By the Word, you get married. It's by the Word that the person closes a business deal. It's through the Word that the person either does God's will or their own will or even the devil's will. It's through the word that people communicate, they rejoice or they get sad. The word is power. The word is power. Here on earth, the word is power. With the word you make money, with the word you lose money, with the word you lie and take advantage of those who are being deceived, but because of the word of lies as well, later on you lose everything. So the word has power to unite and to separate. The word has power to do anything in this life. The word of God is God in us. God in us. Obviously, if we obey this word. So, you can imagine, you have the understanding, you have an idea that the word has power with God or without God. With or without the Holy Spirit, the word has power, isn't it? Just to remind you and illustrate this according to the Bible, when men decided to build the Babel Tower, they had one thought, one word. They got together and started to build a tower. What did God do in order to remove this power from them? He separated them. He confused their language and they stopped communicating and once unable to communicate, they dispersed, they got separated from each other. That's how it is in marriage as well. When the husband combines, matches with the wife, with the same thoughts, the same words, then they will both do well for the whole life. But if there is division, if there is no communication, then there is separation. So we work with the Word, and the Word is reasoning, the Word is intelligence. The Word is not emotions, it is intelligence, wisdom. So you today have a wisdom a discernment and knowledge of the Word of God. So you are no longer a slave of anyone because Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Isn't it? And once you know the truth, you are going to pass it on to others and those who were enslaved will be made free. Yes or no? So you are free and through you, there will be freedom wherever you go. Think about this. Look at the 
Look at what it says there, the Old Testament, the psalmist said, Psalm 104, verse 4. Display the screen, please. Look at what the Holy Spirit said through the psalmist, who makes his angels spirits. Who makes his angels spirits. What does it mean? What's the difference between angels and spirits? I don't know. I don't have this understanding yet. But one thing I know, if the angels do not think they only obey, if they are just obedient to God, then God makes them spirit, meaning that they think. Amen? And his ministers, a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Praise God. His ministers. You are a minister of God. A minister of God. What is a minister? Who are the ministers? Here we have the president and the ministers, isn't it? The ministers help the president to govern. They give advice, they correct, exhort, etc., etc., etc. God does not need anyone. He doesn't need ministers. He doesn't need angels. Anyone. He's self-sufficient. He's self-existent. But the way that He wants us here on earth to live, He also established the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, I understand that it's up there. The Lord is king of the kingdom of heaven. Here on earth, there are kings, the kings of this world. And Jesus came to bring the kingdom of heaven to the world. And he established in the world the kingdom of God which means that with the same characteristics of the kingdom of heaven, meaning the Lord reigning over, over everything that exists in heaven and on earth. And he obviously works with angels there in heaven. Yes or no? Who does he work with in heaven? with the angels, and he makes these angels spirits. Here on earth, God works with whom? With angels. No, he works with his ministers. And if the person is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, they are spirit. They are minister of God himself. They are a flame of fire. Amen? You can see that as well in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. Let's display on the screen as well. Hebrews 1 7. This is too glorious. Hallelujah. May the Lord be sanctified. His name be sanctified here in our midst and awaken the intelligent faith, the, the separate faith from all sorts of emotions and feelings, from a service full of songs and worship and etc. The text says, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits, and his ministers, a flame of fire. Hallelujah. So, in heaven, God works with the angels. Here on earth, God works with his ministers. Who are the ministers? Those 
who bring his word throughout all the earth. God's ministers are the ones who are flames of fire, which means the following. Wherever there is a minister of God, a servant of God, one servant of God, then there there is a flame of fire. And that's why Jesus said that the gates of hell, the gates of the kingdom of hell would not prevail against the kingdom of God, which is the church, my church. It would not prevail. It cannot prevail. Hell cannot stand against the servants of God. It can't. It's not able to. Because the servants of God are flames of fire. The devil sees that. Perhaps you don't see it. Of course, you don't see the flame of fire, physically speaking. But when you are on the altar and you speak of the word of God in the Holy Spirit, you are ministering the word of God. You there feel the fire of God flowing through you and passing on to people. That fire makes children of God be born. That's it. And the devil cannot. If he could, the universal church would not exist anymore. Yes or no? How many times did he try? How many times did he try to destroy the church? How many times did he try to quench this fire? But he could not because the gates of Hades cannot prevail the church against the church of our Lord, against the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God here on earth is spiritual. The kingdom of God here is not the institutional church, a church like all the other churches, including the universal church. The universal church is an institution. It's an institutional church, which means it is an organization, a spiritual organization here on earth. It does not mean that the members of this institutional church, nor its pastors and bishops, are necessarily spiritual. It doesn't mean necessarily that they are spiritual. Of course, there are those who are part of this institutional church and that in reality, the institutional church, the universal church, which is the institutional church, becomes the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because his servants and his ministers are flames of fire. When they are not flames of fire, the person can even be a pastor, a minister, a bishop, a pastor's wife, but if they are not born of the Holy Spirit, if they are not born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, if they don't have the Holy Spirit, then this element is a stranger in the kingdom of God here on earth, meaning in the church of our Lord Jesus that is spiritual and invisible. Who here belongs to the spiritual church? And who belongs only to the physical church, the institutional church? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I know the following. That those who are flames of fire, these ones will remain forever, until the end. Those who are not flames of fire, will stay with us, they 
have seen, they have the appearance of being a flame of fire, but if they indeed are not, they only belong to the universal church of the kingdom of God, the institution. They won't belong to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual church. They don't belong to it. And sooner or later, they will leave. Sooner or later, they will leave. Where the pastor's wife, a bishop, or the bishop's wife, whoever, if they are and they belong, if they are flames of fire, if they belong to the spiritual church, to the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, that doesn't have a name, it doesn't have a sign outside, it's spiritual. If they are not part of this spiritual church, the person is just part of the institutional church, and consequently, sooner or later, they will leave. And if they die this way, there is no salvation to them, because they hear the word of God, they hear and understand the word of God. Who here does not understand that if they are not born of the water and the Holy Spirit, they cannot enter the kingdom of God, the spiritual church. The church, the, all the pastors and ministers are flames of fire. Who can say, oh, I didn't know that? No, no one can say that. Everyone knows. Jesus speaks in his word in Matthew 7, Matthew 7, verse 21, if I'm not wrong. He said like this, not everyone who says to me, look at how strong this is. Not everyone who says to me, meaning, pay attention, think, rationalize, use your intelligence. Not everyone, meaning, in the entire, we can say, universe of people, out of all those, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So not everyone who call themselves pastors, assistants, auxiliary pastors, members, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does, he who what? Who does the will of my Father in heaven. Did you understand? So, there are those who think and believe. They even believe that they are of God. But why? Because Jesus said in the following verse, Many will say to me in that day, judgment day, the day of separation, of the wheat from the chaff, many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, an unbeliever doesn't say, Lord, Lord, do they? Only believers say this. Have you noticed that? Have you? Only believers, only those who are in the institutional church say, Lord, Lord, yes or no? Don't you agree with me? Therefore, even those who supposedly are born of God, we all say in the church, Lord, Lord. But not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Then he says, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in your name as if they were justifying their work? As if they were saying, Oh Lord, come on, you can't close the door on my face because I cast out demon, I prophesied. Meaning, to prophesy is to preach the word of God. When you preach the word of God, you are prophesying. Oh, I, I preach your word. 
I cast out demons. I, I do many wonders and signs. I, I've done it. It's written here. Look there. Have we not done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them. I will tell them openly. I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So those who are a flame of fire do not live in the practice of sin. And if they sin, they want to get themselves right with God straight away. Because when a person sins, when an unbeliever sings, they, oh, let it go. But when a person is of God and they sing, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the flame of fire keeps burning and speaking to them inside of them. They have no peace. They have no peace. They, uh, until the moment that they get to the point of confessing to the authorities of the church, the authorities of God, and say, listen, I sinned, I did this and that. Here, I, I made lots of mistakes. And they are forgiven straight away. And when they are forgiven, is because they received peace. They receive peace. They are forgiven and they receive peace. They are at peace. As long as they are not forgiven, they won't be at peace. The Word of God says that there is no peace for the wicked. They can have money, they can have wealth, a good name, they can be a person of influence in this world, but they will have no peace. They will have no peace. And if they have no peace here, then they won't have peace beyond life here on earth. Yes or no? So, when a person justifies themselves before God, oh, I did this, I did that, and the other, they are trying to defend themselves. But Jesus knows your character. He knows. What's the point of you trying to show off your work if you have a bad character? You are the kind of person that does your own will. You cast out demons. You used my name. You performed many wonders. You used my name, my word. You prophesied using my word. But you didn't do my will. You didn't do my will. Therefore, you... I, I never knew you. I don't know you. You are not part of my kingdom. Depart from me. That's it. There's no... There's no way to justify a person anymore. They're out. And this is the understanding of our work, your work, your ministry. This is the divine understanding from God to those who are of God. You, pay attention. You who are a minister of God, you who are a minister of God indeed, you, you are a flame of fire. You are a flame of fire. And the Holy Spirit confirms this inside of you right now. But if you are not, He will also confirm this inside of you, that you are not. And you know why you are not. You know why you are not. Probably, you are a hypocrite because the hypocrites are like this. They preach something they do not practice. They preach something they do not practice. But those who are of God, they practice what they practice. Because before preaching to the people, they preach to themselves and above all to his first sheep which is his wife. If he is a hypocrite, full of pretense, 
His wife is here and sees that he is a hypocrite. He's talking about something that he doesn't do. Yes or no? But if he is a flame of fire, his first sheep agrees with God because she sees in him a true servant. Amen, friends? The question is, who have you been before God? Who? Because you know, the hypocrite knows he is a hypocrite. A person full of pretense knows they are pretending. A person who pretends they feel uncomfortable, bothered in the meeting. Why? Because this word is the word of God. And a person who pretends cannot do anything about it. Unless that they recognize, Oh my Lord, forgive me, I have been a hypocrite. And I want to resolve this problem because I don't want to continue this way. I can't even be a pastor. I don't have the right to be anything, to exercise any sort of authority in the church because the church of the Lord Jesus is spiritual. It's the kingdom of God here on earth. And God's kingdom is perfect. The church of the Lord Jesus is perfect. There is no injustice or is there. In the institutional church, there is injustices, for sure. But in the spiritual church, is there injustice in it? No. If you are in the spiritual church, there is no injustice for you. But if you are in the institutional church, then you feel wronged, you complain about so-and-so, you're going to talk about the injustices, you are not going to be well. Why? Because you are not of God. You are not of God. You are pretending to be of God. And therefore, your life does not develop. That's why it's not your ministry. Because when a person is in sin, though he's in sin, he uses the word of God. And he performed wonders, isn't it what Jesus said? Oh, Lord, they, they said to the Lord, Oh, Lord, we've done many wonders in your name. It's written here. What are these wonders? What are these wonders? Signs, miracles to resurrect the dead, to prosper people. The church grows from a, a simple, small church you build a castle at the Temple of Solomon there. Wonders, yes or no? And Jesus is the one who knows what's inside of you because the Father knows the children, doesn't he? And the children know the Father. And he said, I do not know you. This is too strong. Imagine a person in our midst pretend a year, two, 15, 20, 30, 40 years fighting and working and then get to the end of their life before the throne of God. And Jesus tells them, I do not know you. Depart from me. It's like those five foolish virgins. The door closed and they were left outside. Think about your life. Because we are not here dealing about dealing with bread and money and material life, we are not talking about anything that is temporary or fleeting, 20, 50, 100 years. No, we are talking about eternity, dear friends. It's eternity we are talking about. Eternity. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. In the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of Jesus, by the Word of Jesus, 
Pay attention to yourself. Evaluate your faith. Evaluate your life, your personal life. Because either you are a flame of fire or you are not. And it's not just the man, the minister. No, the wife as well. A woman as well. They are both one flesh, one body, one spirit. He who is joined to the Lord is one with him. So everyone, is, there's no man, women, black, white. No, the spiritual church, the church of the Lord Jesus doesn't have black and white. There's no ugly, beautiful women, men. There's only ministers of God. Flame of fire. Amen, friends? Of course, in the institutional church, there is white, black, ugly, beautiful, skinny, chubby, men, women. Yes, but in the church of the Lord Jesus, dear friends, there's no age. There's no old. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's no bowed people. Do you understand? There's no such thing. It's flames of fire. Fire. It's to break through. It's fire, dear friends. Amen. You are a flame of fire. And this is the reason why in Africa the church develops. Because they were placed in certain countries and and tribes and nations, people who were flame of fire, and the work developed, and it keeps growing. Amen, friends? They faced hell. They faced problems. They were persecuted, wronged. Yes or no? They faced hatred, but they remained. Why? Because they are spirit. They are flames of fire. Amen? The spirit is a spirit. It's not flesh. Flesh is the one that feels jealous and envious. It's the flesh that gossips, that has malice towards others. But those who are life-giving spirits, they don't have any of that. They are life-giving spirits. They are a flame of fire. And they have to break through. No, we think the guy is a flame of fire. He's fire. He's a life-giving spirit. It's the nature of Jesus, right? The first man, Adam, was what? A living being. But the last man is what? A life-giving spirit. A life-giving spirit. If the person is a life-giving spirit, they are a flame of fire. You can read that there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. You are going to see that. It speaks of the life-giving spirit. Display there, my child. And so it is written. Look how nice this is. The first man, Adam became a living being. The institutional church has many living beings, and that's why you have a lot of problems in your church. But when the church is spiritual, the church is the kingdom of God. When the pastor, the minister, is a life-giving spirit, then he gives birth to life-giving spirits and flames of fire. Amen, friends? Did you understand the difference? And you are amongst... Either you are a life-giving spirit and a flame of fire, or you are a living being and are not part of the kingdom of God. But there is still a chance. You can still become a life-giving spirit. You can still be a flame of fire from the moment that you repent. 
you are thinking of your soul, the salvation of your soul, then you are going to say, no, I don't care if I will be ashamed if they believe in me or not. I want, oh my God, be merciful to me. Forgive me. I don't want to be who I've been anymore. I'm tired of being myself. I'm tired of being this deceiving, full of pretense type of person am amongst your people. Then, yes, you repented sincerely. You are baptized in water. You bury that nature. And then, yes, heavens are open and the Spirit of God comes upon you and turns you into a life-giving spirit, a flame of fire, a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Then, yes, you will start to indeed do the will of God, not the work of God, because the work of God, you use the name of Jesus and you do the work of God. Anyone does the work of God. Jesus said, in that day, many will say, many will say, in other words, few in that day will be received with a, a warm welcome, welcome to my father's house. Did you understand? Analyze this in yourself. And I say this to the whole church, not only here in Africa, but in every continent, in every country, every city, every state, everywhere, wherever this message is reaching, I'm talking to everyone, pastors, bishops, those who are responsible for states, countries, whatever, it doesn't matter. You who are part of the institutional church, you should know that the institutional church called the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God has these two types of people. Those who are life-giving spirits and those who are a living being. Those who are life-giving spirits, they have to be handling Besides preaching the gospel to those who are out there, they have to be handling problems of those who are living beings. Yes or no? These are the ones who are inside of the church, the institutional church, but do not belong to the church of the Lord Jesus. And these living beings are the ones who cause us a lot of problems. But those who are life-giving spirit, those who are flames of fire, they stand, they stand the, the test of fire, the baptism of fire, they go through the baptism of fire, they are forged in the furnace, the divine furnace, and they remain, they overcome, they overcome everything. Those who are of God are at peace with themselves, they have peace. Amen? Despite of all the problems there is in the church, despite of it all, we live at peace. Esther and I, we sleep well, we sleep in peace, we wake up in peace. We spend the whole day in peace, always, 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 always. There's no problem between us. Amen? Praise God. And I know that this also happens to the vast majority. I know that the majority as well, praise God, I believe, and that's why the church exists, the majority that has peace before the problems. We have pastors fighting, working there in Ukraine, in the war, the bombs are dropping and they are there, they didn't leave. We have pastors working there in Israel, problems, wars, but they are there, subject to all the circumstances, but they are there strong and in the faith. Why? Because 
they are flames of fire or life-giving spirits. They are this burning fire. Wherever we go, there is a servant of God, a child of God. Ah, dear friend. It's to break through. Did you understand? So, if you are wronged, you will know who you are. You will know who you are. If you are a life-giving spirit or if you are a living being. If you are a living being, you will try to, no, this is not right. I want justice. But if you are a life-giving spirit, you will rejoice and praise God because the Apostle Paul, used by the Holy Spirit, says clearly, what if our unrighteousness is the cause, the reason of God's righteousness? So first we are wronged and right after God comes and justifies us. Amen? First, we are penalized by the wicked ones. But then God comes and says, come here, my child. And he gives us twice as much, much more than what he would have given. Why? Because it's a servant. It's a life-giving spirit. Come on. Come on. Dear friends, let me tell you something. I, I feel like flying. I, I, I won't fly because I have no wings. But if I did have wings, you would see. <laughs> but that's it. Look at what is written. This is written. This is too strong. Assuredly, as for the angels, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Pay attention. Display the verse there. Hebrews 1.7 And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. No, it doesn't say flame of fire. It is written flame, meaning you are a flame, I am a flame, we are a flame, meaning one spirit only. Ah, dear friends, it's to break through. Yes or no? Which means that those who are a flame of fire are in one spirit, the Holy Spirit, because this flame of fire is the Holy Spirit. We are in Him. It's what the Holy Spirit says Himself through the Apostle Paul. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So we are one spirit with the Holy Spirit. Have you imagined this? God has turned us into the blessing itself because His Spirit is in us. Here, the, the, the Portuguese translation, He is wrong. It should be His ministers, a flame of fire, not in plural. Portuguese is plural. It's a flame. Is one in the Holy Spirit. Is one with God. One God, one Spirit, one people, one church. Ah, dear friends, one kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Oh, my Father, my beloved Father. Only you can make the penny drop because it's too great, my Lord, for those who are still living beings, but for us who are a flame of fire. Hallelujah. Oh, my Father, let your fire burn right now. Let your fire, my God, burn in our midst and turn this nation, 
turn so it to my Lord, a center of evangelism to all Africa and the world in order for your name to be sanctified, Holy Spirit, for your name to be honored indeed, my Father, and not with the nonsense talk of feelings of emotions and worship. No, my God, we have to be being who we are, a flame of fire, then your name has to be sanctified through our lives. I ask you, my Father, let it burn right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't say anything, please. And without any feelings, without music, without emotion, without anything, here, as it is, the Spirit of the Most High God descends upon those who sincerely are working, are serving, but still are not a flame of fire. They are still not a flame of fire. The Holy Spirit, my Lord, descend upon your servants now all over the world. Lift up the fallen, those who are downcast, those who are stumbling, those who are tired, my Father, those who are old in the faith, but they have been until now just living beings. I pray that you may transform them now into life-giving spirits, my Father, into a flame of fire. Receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, and get out of this cold state that you are in your faith, this situation where you belong to the universal church, but you don't belong to the kingdom of God. Get out, get out of this situation right now and enter the kingdom of God. Only you can do that, O Holy Spirit. We can preach and teach and lead and speak and speak and speak and repeat ourselves. But if you, Lord, do not convince, nothing will be done. And I know that you convince when truth comes to surface. You speak. And if you do not speak, in our mind, or if our mind has not had ears to hear your voice, then you bring problems. You don't allow us to be at peace. There's no peace to the wicked. So, my God, come right now, descend upon this work, upon this institution, and make it a hundred percent your kingdom, the kingdom of God, so that my Lord, our Lord, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be sanctified all over the earth, from now and forever, amen, and praise God, praise God, I've been giving to you what God has given me, take it with all of your strength, because it's what has been sustaining me in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. May God bless you all.